You say that no one has to fail in order for Stripe to succeed. What does that mean? I mean, does it mean you don't think you have any real competitors? Well, I think there's a desire to set these things up as a, you know, Stripe versus banks or, or you know, X versus Y whenever, whenever there's a narrative about these things. A very large fraction of the time when people are building businesses on Stripe, they're building businesses in white space as opposed to replacing uh, another business directly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the stat that is very motivating for us is that 5% of global commerce takes place online today. You know, the other 95% is offline. Uh, and so that's what we mean when we say no one has to fail. You've done a lot of partnerships with companies that could be perceived as your competitors, like Apple, like Google, like Visa. Yeah. Walk me through the strategy. We think all of those consumer payment methods will all be really successful over time. But what has always been lacking is a platform for the businesses to just manage and abstract the complexity of doing business online in 2018. When you talk to a business and just what is required, even for table stakes, uh, to get up and running, managing the payments and the treasury and the regulation and the compliance and all the complexity that goes with that. First off, take doing it in the US and then take doing it all around the world. That was a hugely heavy lift beforehand and I think had this really um, damaging effect where only large companies could do it and they couldn't pivot very quickly. I mean, you look at what internet businesses are doing today, the business models are changing, they're much more global, they're often getting much more complex, like a multi-party interaction or something like that. And so that's what we're focused on and that's why, I mean, Apple Pay has been growing like a weed as a payment method and that's phenomenal for Stripe. Stripe's been working with smaller businesses for a long time, but Bloomberg broke the news. You are now working with Amazon. You're working with Facebook, Microsoft, Allianz. Booking.com, Lyft, how does a startup that is growing, but still a startup like Stripe, serve such huge companies? I think our success with, with sort of these larger companies and the, the companies you name, it's not kind of despite the fact that we started working with startups, mm -hmm. it is because we started working with startups. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, when you start as a startup, and especially when you're serving startups, you can't bamboozle them with like fancy sales materials and like this big marketing campaign or whatever. Like they're just not gonna be deceived by it. They will assess you precisely on the product merits, what helps them innovate fastest and you know fulfill their ambitions and goals and all the rest as rapidly as possible. And so it's really punishing. And so we were forced to build a product that sort of uh, you know helped them execute as quickly as possible.